Hey guys, today we're going to be doing the assembly of the pop-up docks. And uh, this little dock piece is a great place to pull up your boat. Maybe uh, if your characters are evil aligned, you could be giving somebody the old cement shoes. And uh, there's a little, little fishery shack there and uh, pop up, the whole thing holds flat and pops back up. So let's, uh, let's get started. First thing you're going to do is gather your supplies. You're going to need to have printed out your pop-up docks uh, PDF, uh, double-sided on, uh, I like to use 60-pound cover stock or 80-pound cover stock. Uh, either one of those is great for, you know, card stock, cover stock, pretty much, uh, the terms are sometimes used interchangeably. Um, so you'll have that printed out. You'll also need scissors, glue, or tape, double-sided tape. I'm using double-sided tape for this because it's it's going to make things go faster. I don't have to wait for a dry time. A scoring tool. Uh, I like to use a dried-out ballpoint pen. Exacto knife, some extra blades, and a ruler. You're also going to need some material for backing. I've got two pieces of. 6 inch by 14 inch uh, mat board is what I'm going to use. You can use cardboard, foam core, anything that's just a little bit stiffer than regular paper. And let's get started. The first thing we're going to do uh, is assemble the base. And what that entails is, first of all, first of all uh, cutting out these base parts. Um, you don't need to cut them out too precisely at this point, except on the places where they're going to overlap. So this big piece here is not going to overlap anything else. Everything's going to be on top of it. And then this other big piece is only going to overlap along the center line. There. And... Uh, you don't need to be too careful about the edges at this point because I'll be trimming those when I trim the uh, the, the base material here. Uh, so this piece will cut to the edge on these two sides here. Uh, it's usually a good idea to try to keep your table pretty clean, pretty clear of uh, the, the cut parts, especially if you can see they're blank, just to make sure that you're not um, mixing those in with with parts that haven't, you know, that, that still have still have parts on them. You don't want to accidentally throw anything away or anything like that. Okay, so these pieces will fit together like this to form the whole hexagon of the base. Start by putting the big pieces together. And I let, I got tape over the edge here, rather than pulling the tape off. Double-sided tape is like, it's pretty sticky, guys. I don't know if you knew that. Uh, so usually it's best to trim off that extra tape, even though it'll be clear, so that it doesn't stick to something else when, uh, when the pop-up's supposed to be working. those ground textures make sure the lines are at least pretty close to matching up and attach and we're going to 
put the two lower. What I think of as lower, I guess. I mean, there's no real like direction. Okay. And then attach that. Now this is a fairly complicated pop-up. It's got a lot of parts. It's got four pages of parts. And uh, they need to be attached in the right order for this one. So we'll go through numerically. Make sure each part is score, scored, cut, and attached in numerical order. Again, match up the ground textures for this. If you're a little bit off, it's, it doesn't really matter, but you want it to be pretty close. Okay, so that's our base. Um, with all the things there, so let's uh, let's score down the middle line. That will ensure that it bends in the right place. With this one, I mean, there's it overlaps right there. It's probably gonna bend there anyway, but just score it just to be just to be 100% sure that it's gonna fold down the middle. Make this shape. And now we're gonna attach this to that. So the next thing we need to do is put some tape on here. Not, not right there. That was the wrong place to put tape. I found with double-sided tape, if you pull it up very slowly, it tends to come up a little bit better. But uh, I really have no guarantees with double-sided tape if it's going to come off. It will most likely rip something. So that's okay, you know, something rips, it's, you know, you can repair it, it's paper, right? Or uh, print out another one. You just printed the first one out, so presumably you have access to a printer of some sort. Or the backs of these parts are printed so that there's, a, there's some extra texture there in between the parts, and you could cut that out and glue it over whatever you messed up. I've done that. done that before. Okay, and I got a little tape over the edge here. I'm going to make sure that's trimmed. And then take the other side here. The docks. By the waterfront. I feel like in movies there's always a bunch of, you know, stuff happens at the docks, right? Vampires get into fights. Uh, there's like smuggling going on. Things come up out of the water that shouldn't. Things go into the water that shouldn't. It's a place where, uh, where things happen. So. Probably the most exciting thing that happened to me at some docks was I caught my foot on a boat hook. Not a boat hook, but like the little, uh, little dock thingies where you wrap the rope around. And I had to get stitches under my pinky toe. So what I like to do when attaching the base is to put the one base part on top of the other one, line up this printed part over here, and then slide it over, attach it like that. What that does is it creates a little bit of space in between the two, uh, two pieces of basing material. And it makes it so that it's much easier for the pop-up to lay flat right after opening. If you don't do it, it's not a big deal. If they're right next to each other, it'll still lay flat eventually, but because of the tension, the paper gets used to being folded. And so without you pushing it open, it, 
it wants to stay closed. So if you're using a if, if the base pieces are right next to each other, they push against each other as it opens and they keep it from from opening as well as it could. And that's not great because you want that little bit of space. You want it to open because you want to be able to surprise your players. Otherwise, you got to get it out like half an hour ahead of time. You just want to be able to look, bam, look at that, trick the docks. You come across some docks. And then, like, if you're clever, you'll have some doctors or something there. Docks on the docks. So, like, your players will be like, dude. Anyway, so uh, then we're going to trim off the extra material, the extra basing material here. Make sure that everything is nice and lined up. Be careful not to trim off too much excess. Keep in mind that as printed, if you printed all your stuff, without scaling it, it'll fit with the other hexagons perfectly. But if you chop off too much of the edges, then basically you're creating space in between the other hexagons. Uh, it's usually not, not a huge deal, but, you know. All right, so we've got our nice, nice crisp edges, and it's time for us to work on putting these parts on. So the first thing we're going to do is get our scoring tool, and we're going to score all the places that are marked for scoring, okay? And that's every place where a blue arrow points to another blue arrow, and we're going to score along the line in between those two arrows. And what that's going to do is ensure that when the paper folds, it folds there and not somewhere else. We want, we want the paper to fold right along these blue arrows because that's where this, that's what's going to make the pop up. Pop. Up. Now there's probably going to be some cases, I don't know if this one has any, but some of these have, uh, places where the arrow just points and there's not an arrow on the other side. Usually that's uh, like a printing or space um, constraint and so that is just uh, just means score till you get along that line till you get past the part, you know. And sometimes there'll be special instructions on how to score and fold. This is one such case. Okay, these stairs need to be scored and folded in very specific ways. So we're gonna um, we're going to look over how to do that. So you're going to score all the way to here. Look at that. That's, that matches up with that. And then uh, let's score these other places real quick. Okay. So on the stairs, we're basically scoring all of these vertical lines and cutting the horizontal lines. Okay. So any place you see a vertical black line there that's part of the stairs, where the stairs meet something, that's where you score. And then we're going to cut all the places where it's a black line. So we cut all the way to the edge there. We're just going to cut this now, even though we're not going to be cutting this part out until later. But, uh, but now we've done the interior cuts that are going to make this stairs work. We're going to do the same thing over here. These vertical spots are going to be scored. Seems silly to use a ruler for something this small, so you can just do a, eyeball it. And then these horizontal lines are going to be cut, but only one goes all the way to the edge. Follow the diagram um, as carefully as you can, because that's going to make it. That's what's going to make this thing work. Okay, and then uh, we'll finish scoring the rest of this page, and then we'll move on to cutting out part number one. Now, parts number one, two, and three 
are the supports that go under the dock and make sure everything stays flat. And uh, they're pretty important. And they're very difficult to attach later, so let's go ahead and cut out part number one. And part number one is going to go right in the middle. And it's also going to help pull the front of the uh, little fish shack, fishing shack on the on the dock there up. It's going to make sure the dock is it stays flat right in the middle too. So this is a pretty important little piece. And we're going to make sure that it is in the right spot. So on the ground you can see each of the spots where things are supposed to be glued down. There's a nice rectangle around it. You just match it up with the edges of that rectangle and attach it. You'll be, you'll be sitting pretty. Okay? So that is part number one. Next we do part number two. And uh, we need to find it. Here it is on the same page as part number one. Okay, part number two is gonna hold up the help pull up the other side of that uh, fishing shack, and it's also going to make sure the dock sits flat and. Uh, For the most part, it's going to be underneath the dock, so no one's really going to see much of this part except for this part up here that sticks out. It's sort of a sign and some fantasy language. Probably lizard folk, you know? Those guys. Guys are always coming down to the docks. Okay, so again, we got two to B. We line those spots up with the edges of the rectangle and attach. Then we've got part number three, which is over here. And part number three is going to be completely under the dock. None of it's going to pop up and through another part. So it's uh, still doing an important job down there, you know, making sure everything, making sure, make sure everything works properly. Properly? No, that's not going to catch on. Even with pop-ups, I don't think poppily is a... No. Let's, let's just forget I said that. Okay. Um, so, part three to B. Again, we're going to want to match up those ground textures. Just make sure that it's in the rectangle. And attach. Okay, so we've done one, two, and three. Time to move on to part four. Part four is a much more complicated part, and it, uh, it's going to require a lot of cutting. Sometimes I like to cut all the, all the lines going one direction first. These interior slots, very important that those get cut out, so do not do not forget those, my friends. In fact, I should I recommend cutting out the smallest little interior spaces first, and then moving to the larger ones to ensure that the remaining paper 
provides as much support as possible for each cut. Because even with a sharp X-Acto knife, you're still creating friction with the paper that could cause it to fold or bend in ways that would require you to repair the paper later. I'm sure there are people who have done have done a lot of paper crafting out there who would be better qualified to give you information on this than I am. But right now, I'm all you got, right? You're stuck watching this video forever until it's over, you know? All right. So this is part number four. Now the stairs are gonna fold like that. Okay, this part stays parallel to this part and the stairs fold. Okay, so we got the stairs folded. We're gonna fold the rest of this the way it should be folded. This one goes out, valley fold, mountain fold along these pylons, another mountain fold here, valley fold, and this will be a valley fold, okay? All right, so that's what this piece is gonna look like, and we are gonna go ahead and attach it to that. So step one, we're going to attach it to the base on 4 to be 1 and then we'll we'll uh, complete 4 to be 2 as well okay and 4 to be 1 is going to be a big one so make sure it matches up and it's going to be an outside piece, one of the most one of the most visible spots where you can glue. So just try to make it a straight line, you know, get it in there. All right, and then uh, we're going to slot part two here through the middle, and we're going to slot part one through these two holes. Okay. And then from there we're gonna we're gonna attach four to B two. Okay. So let's line up the ground textures, make sure it's in that rectangle, and attach that. All right, uh, and I think those are the glue spots for part four. So let's go ahead and move on to part five. And part five is the other big, the other big part forming the other side of these docks. So let's go ahead and cut out those interior spaces. There's no slots on part five like there were on part four. Just these spaces in between the, the pylons. Are they pylons if they're that small? They're, they're just like round boards, I guess, you know? Although I think the definition of a board is that it's not round, so... Anyway, we're going to go ahead and keep calling them pylons because I can't think of the right word for them. And uh, just going to have to deal with it. Again, you're trapped in this video. So what we're doing now is cutting out all these interior spaces, making sure we can see under the docks. 
who knows what's down there. Probably like some like evil mer people. Kind of interesting, you know, I feel like Hans Christian Andersen with the Little Mermaid kind of turned around the image of mer people, right? The idea that like they oh they're they're okay they're not evil. Although I can't think of any stories where the mer people were evil. Pre Hans Christian Andersen. I mean you have sirens that sing to the sailors, but they're not really like mer folk. So much, are they? I mean, they spend a lot of time on the rocks. Anyway, so again, the stairs fold in such a way that the two sides remain parallel, and you just pull one down like that, one side down, so that that makes those stairs. So then we're gonna do another valley fold. Mountain fold. Another mountain fold here. Uh, another valley fold there. And this, this part's going to attach right there to that. So let's go ahead and attach to the base first. Just because that's, uh, in my in my view, that's sort of like best, best workflow. Make sure everything is attached to the base. And then... If it's straight on the base and it needs to attach to another part, uh, that, that generally lines up a little easier than trying to do it to a part which generally has a smaller uh, attach point. Okay, so that piece goes all the way down that side. And, uh, I think, yeah, let's go ahead, let's, let's attach it to the base first. I'm committed to that, I'm committed to that now. I said it, I'm gonna do it. Uh, so now we've got five to B2. Just make sure that those rectangles line up. All right, so you may have noticed that part three attaches to part five. So what we're gonna do is open this up and attach part three here. And then make sure that it's uh, standing up straight. And we're not gonna push it down too hard just yet. We're gonna kind of leave that. I mean, you could attach it now if you if you feel like it's straight. It's probably fine, but some parts I like to leave until I fold the whole thing flat and make sure that they're lining up exactly where they're gonna line up when it's flat. So I'm not really pushing part three to five down yet. Just letting that tape kind of sit there until I get everything ready here. So. And this part is going to attach underneath there. We'll get that in a second. But we need to line up parts four and parts five and attach that. And then what I'm going to do is fold it, fold the whole thing flat and just make sure that part three attaches to part five in the right spot. It looks like it, uh, it's, it's on there. That's working great. Okay. And there is another part uh, uh, underneath there, but I don't, uh, it doesn't really need to be glued, so we're just going to leave it. Alright, that was parts four and five. Parts six is what I'm now looking for. That's part nine. Aha, okay. So now we're putting on the tops of the pylons, little uh, railing on the side, kind of gives the whole dock the 
sort of a more stable feel and uh, you know looks great so let's go ahead and cut out part six and part seven eight and nine are all more that are like it so are they structurally necessary no but are they necessary to make this dock look like some cool docks? Yes. So, let's make it. Not sure what you guys thought of that show. It was okay, right? It was okay. I watch shows like that and the uh, the Lego show and I think maybe I'm not the type of builder who would like work well in that environment. You gotta make stuff fast and I tend to, I like to take my time, put stuff together nice and uh, nice and slow. I mean those Lego ones especially, like if you didn't come in there with some design ideas already, which it's clear, it's clear that some of the people did not. <laughs> They're like, okay, ducks. <laughs> uh, then again, you know, it's a new show. Like, I'm sure there are people like right now who are like practicing at home with their Lego builds so that they can they can be the champions of Lego Masters. All right. So our next piece, we've got a bunch of pieces of adhesive on, on part six, all the way down. This is one that I think might be faster if you were gluing it, because you could just put a little blob of glue on each spot. But uh, with tape, we've taped each six to five location, and uh, we want to make sure that they go right, right onto this, I don't know, this side right here of the docks, and that they they line up so the pylons uh, look continuous. So they look like they're going behind this board and then showing up above this board, and it's one, it's one pylon. Um, so it's. Even though it was two parts, the two parts now give the illusion that there are all these different parts in there. Um, yeah. Part number seven is a shorter section of pylon tops that's going to go right on the other side of that pier. So we'll just cut that out real quick. Tape that on. It's gonna make it, just gives it like a much more pure like feel for me, you know. And then the boats will have something to, you know, tie off to, you know, they'll come in. And, uh, they'll be, uh, you know, place for the sailor to come into town, you know? He'll come into town on a sunny day, bringing gifts from far away. But uh, he's gonna tell you that uh, can't stay because uh, 
No harbor is his home. He's going to say to you, you know, you're a fine girl. What a good wife you would be, but uh, my life and my love and my lady is the sea. That's uh, what he's going to say. All right. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing on part number eight that we did on part number six. We are going to make sure that there is some sort of adhesive substance or material on each of these spots where they attach to the bottoms of the pylons. So that uh, this section can be attached. sure that that lines up with the pylons and we're going to put those on. And then there's one more short section, part number nine, part number nine here, that attaches to the other side of that one. done with the pylons. I can stop talking about them. Maybe. Who knows? Maybe not. Maybe not. Honestly, whenever I say the word pylon, I think about Halo, you know? The pylons. There's that quest but with all the pylons. Okay, so that uh, is that part. Next, we're doing part number 10. And part number 10 is a piece that's going to make sure the stairs stay up. Um, that's important. It's a little bit fiddly to get it in there. So, watch closely, my friends. Fold it there and there to form a letter C. And then we tape it down. And we're also going to, well, we'll do that later. Okay, so we fold these stairs back and just attach this 10 right underneath the stairs there onto the base. 10 to B, okay? And then there's 10 to 4, 1. That's a spot that needs to be glued or taped. And uh, we have 10 to 4, 2, but that's where it attaches to the stairs, so that, that comes last. So 10 to 4, 1. Get the old 4, 1, 1 on this. All right. And uh, try to pull off that adhesive material. Again, this is another one. It'll probably be easier. Some of these spots are definitely easier with tape. Some of them are easier with glue. So I guess if you're going to do both glue and tape, that'd be the easiest. But we're just doing tape this time. All right. So then that that spot is going to slide up right against that spot and glue onto part number four. And then we're going to attach the rest of part number four. What I like to do is attach uh, you know, a little piece of, piece of stuff there. Cut off the excess, and this is where the other side of the stairs get their support from part number 10, which gets its support in return from the top 
part four. So you just line that up and attach it, and you got your nice little stairs that, that pop up and, and go back down. So now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. The nearly identical part, number 11. So, that one's all done. All the, that one's got another part left on it. We'll keep that. Actually, another part left on that one. Part T1 and T2. We'll keep those around. Uh, so, what is a pirate's favorite letter? Hmm? And of course, the person answering the riddle automatically says, Our. And uh, that's when you say, I, you'd think that, but it'd be the C. <laughs> the C. Okay, so we're making this one into another C. That's why I brought that up. And uh, attaching part number 11 to the base. Scoot it in there. Match up the rectangles and attach and then we're going to attach part number 11 to part number 5 on this little piece which difficult to get some tape on too but definitely possible if you don't have fat fingers like mine uh, okay yeah, I'm just trying to get that little piece of piece of cover off. Okay, there we go. And then we make sure everything's standing up straight and attach. Okay. And then we're all set to attach part number eleven to five on the stair side, eleven to five two. And I just did uh, that wasted that tape. Okay. Let's do that a little bit better this time, if we can. And uh, make sure it's got some tape on there and attach it. You really just need to match up these corners. If the corners match up, then you have it in the right place. Okay. So there we go. We got the stairs on the dock. We got. Uh, We got that part on, now it's time to move on to part number 12. And part number 12 is sort of the basic structural component of our fishing supply store, or whatever the shack is. I think it actually says something on a sign. Um, we'll look around for that. Let's see if we can identify this structure. Because that could be important to our quest, you know? If you don't know what structure that is, how do you know if that's where the, you know, the stuff is hidden? Underneath the floorboards, hanging down into the water because that magical sea medallion has to be kept submerged at all times in seawater or something. Okay. So, uh, yeah, this one's pretty simple. Two mountain folds, and this is going to be, we're going to attach it to these parts here and here, and it'll form the basis of this, this, uh, this shack structure. Where the old fishermen wait out the storms, telling tales of past exploits. The fish they've seen, the flapping fish and the girls they've loved. They may be whales of tales, but they're all true, the old man will say, swearing on his tattoos. Alright, um, so that part, you just line up the textures here, and it attaches either side of the door frame there and then the other side 
match up those textures as well. And uh, attach it. Okay, so now you have this little shack structure that's up there, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna close off the sides of that in a second. But first, we're gonna do tab one and tab two, which are actually one part. But because they go kind of on separate things, uh, might be helpful to think of them as two parts that are already attached. for the sake of the instructions. It might be helpful for you not to think of them that way. Either way, that's how I labeled it. So, you're stuck with that forever. This is a fairly uh, I was gonna say it's simple, but it's sort of complex, okay? It's a folding tab that folds down the middle. Nothing simple about it, alright? So this part is gonna slot onto here, and this part slots onto here, okay? And then we're gonna glue down T1 and T2 to hold those in place. And those are the last pieces on our two other sheets here, so we got T1, and uh, T1 is a part labeled T1 that's shaped like a T, sort of. So like, so meta, right? It's about as meta as my, <laughs> that's the stuff I make gets. Okay, not very meta, I guess, whatever. You're, you're so meta. Okay. So we're gonna make sure there's adhesive on the spots where it needs to stick. And we're going to attach T1 to part five. And that's gonna hold tab one, the tab one side in place. Um, so, we'll just put that on right there. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing with T2, which is just a board. It's not shaped like a T at all. Disappointing. Okay, and again, we're gonna put some adhesive onto the spots where it needs to adhese. I do feel like adhese should maybe be the verb. I don't know why, but, right? It just should. Okay, so then that part goes on there. So that kind of closes off the front of the docks and uh, proclaims that this is the fish and meat market for heroes. So, Little did you know, they, they knew you were coming. And I totally forgot about parts 13 and 14. Those were labeled with numbers. I should have done those before the tabs. I just got excited. So, part 13, not structural in any way, but it does finally tell us what the name of this shack is. It is the Sailor's Rest. And there's a skull on there. So we know that like this is like their final rest, man. It's not. Maybe they should have rested first. Okay, so fisherman's rest. 
And it was right there in the middle of this shack. Sailor's Rest, sorry. The Sailor's Rest. It's a big sign. Maybe this whole little area is called Sailor's Rest. Like, it's the Sailor's Rest Harbor. And, like, there's other, you know, there's other stuff besides this shack. I don't know how much rest you're going to get on a shack on the dock, to be honest. So... The point is, is that uh, there's also a skull there, so maybe maybe there's just a graveyard here, so that like sailors who <laughs> notoriously are buried at sea have a place where they have like a plaque, right? Yeah. So their loved ones don't just have to like stare out at the ocean, all forlorn. They can uh, they can come and be forlorn here. Huh? There is a graveyard pop up. I'm gonna be doing an instruction on that one soon. So, and uh, this little some little shrubbery here, some some sea grass just growing, and a little clump right here. Maybe you you get some cover from that when you're storming the docks. Okay. Last two parts are these are tab three and tab four, and they are designed to enclose the shack, block out some of the the wind and rain that, that that's uh, coming at it, and really make sure that uh, I guess it could be a place where where some sailors could rest because it's enclosed. So tab three is going to correspond with T3. It's going to slot down right here. Looks like there's some handy vents. So if you got a small character or able to shrink and they're trying to sail this hut in a way that doesn't go through the front door for some reason, I mean, you sneak right in there, right through those vents. Or maybe you just sit there and like listen. Maybe you overhear something. You know? The secret plans. The blood pirates or whatever. You know, maybe you over here, you over here, I'm talking, you know? One of them's like, matey, what be your favorite letter? Be it R. And the other one's like, A. You'd think that, but it be the C. All right, so now we attach T3 to 12. And that's going to hold that flap on. And now we've got two more parts. That's all we have left. Tab 4 and T4 that are going to attach and make the front of this thing. And uh, ensure that the friendly folks inside are kept warm and dry with their uh, fish buckets and uh, bags of cement, whatever they have in there. Um, all right. Okay, so now we attach, we slot Tab four onto part twelve, and we attach T four to part twelve in order to hold tab four in place. And those are our docks, folks. We made the docks; they look great. We're gonna close it here. This is the first time some of these parts have bent properly, so it might be a little stiff at first, but. Uh, if it pops back up, and you did everything right. So, there we go. The docks. And uh, you should be able to find the PDFs for these for sale at stonehavenmini.com. Thanks, everyone.